Hello, I'm Ben Voss, Strategic Projects Lead for the United Synagogue in London, and it's a pleasure to speak to you on this week's Parsha for Yesod. Kitetse is this week's Parsha. Kitetse means when you go, and the whole opening line of the Parsha is Kitetse la milchama, when you go to war or go into battle. This is the parasha with the most mitzvahs, commandments, in the whole Torah, a number of which, fittingly, concern social, economic, and even national political relationships. Many of these should underpin any society with aspirations to a sanctified national life. Here are three. One, it is forbidden to exploit a destitute labourer, whether Israelite or not. Two, elements of the harvest must go to those without land or means, the Levite, the non-Jew who lives according to the law, the fatherless and the widow. Three, the people of Ammon and Moab are forbidden from joining the Jewish people due to prior merciless conduct. Note that the convert Ruth was a Moabite and of course benefited from the harvest of her husband-to-be Boaz. The Talmud in Yevamos 67b excludes women of Ammon and Moab from the prohibition on becoming Jews. I'll come back to Ruth. But the two mitzvahs I most want to look at are next to each other, contained in Devarim chapter 23. You shall not hate an Edomite because he is your brother. And You shall not hate an Egyptian because you were a stranger in his land. The first command is straightforward enough. An Edomite, a descendant of Esau, son of Isaac and brother of Jacob, is your brother, you shall not hate him. The second command states that you cannot hate an Egyptian not because you are related, but because you were a stranger in his land. This is despite the Egyptians enslaving the Israelites. Rabbi Lord Sachs says that we should remember the original act of charity of the Egyptians and not the later enslavement of the Jewish people. That act of charity for which the whole Egyptian nation gets credit came when the sons of Jacob escaped famine in Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, and settled in Egypt. Remember again the individual, when the Egyptians later turned against the Israelites, Pharaoh's daughter rescued Moshe Rabbeinu, our teacher Moses, from the reeds where his little basket was bobbing down the Nile towards the Mediterranean. The Jewish people are hopefully not the greatest haters, but relationships between Jews and other nations have had similar, similar trajectories to when Israel lived and then were enslaved in Egypt. Once happy relations have turned sour or much worse. We should remember that just as Joseph's relations were invited to Egypt, so Vladislav, Duke of Poland, invited Jews fleeing the Crusades to his lands, giving rise to centuries of flourishing Polish Jewish civilization. Later still, the Ottoman Sultan, Bayezid II, welcomed Jews expelled from Spain and Portugal to Turkey, in bemusement at the behaviour of his Christian counterparts. People are responsible for their actions, of course, but hate is rarely appropriate. The Canaanites were vomited out from their land because they defiled it, not because of our own holiness. We're told so in Vayikra chapter 18. And even then, a Canaanite woman, Rechav, recognised that Eretz Canaan, the land of Canaan, was destined to become Eretz Israel, the land of Israel and saved the lives of two of Joshua's Israelite spies. Rechav is an example of those in the Torah who through their conduct render stereotypes inaccurate and make absurd those who stereotype. And there is always a daughter, a pharaoh, a Rechav, a Ruth, to disprove generalizations. Still more reason then not to hate. Jews are holy only because of and through our covenant with God and our observance of that covenant. We aren't inherently different except by virtue of our response to our duties. Other opinions exist in mysticism. As I think the Torah implies when forbidding hatred of Edomites and Egyptians, to hate people simply on the basis of difference is absurd. Banning hate is not the same as unconditional love. Rather, the rules against hate guard our souls from fury, from crime and from revenge. But further refinement is possible. The Judaism of this parasha, of not exploiting a poor labourer, of sharing a harvest with the vulnerable, of accepting non-Jews into the covenant at all, cannot thrive 
in an atmosphere of hate or even of contempt for other nations. Let us remember, Rechav, and also Duke Vladislav, we develop as Jews and bring respect to the Torah by rejecting base emotions and by speaking respectfully about and to other people.